ChatGPT launched on November 30th, 2022, and I rushed to publish a video on December 6th on if ChatGPT will kill Google and what it means for the SEO industry. In this video, I'll share how some of these predictions have played out three years later. Let's begin with prediction number one. It is definitely a real competitor and a real opportunity for Google to either try to replicate or if they don't replicate, then something like this could easily put them out of business. So as soon as I experienced ChatGPT for the first time, I knew that if Google didn't move to create something that would emulate what they're doing, they were gonna be in serious trouble. And so come to find out though, Google didn't just respond, they responded really honestly in probably the most epic way that they possibly could have. And so within a very short amount of time, you can see that Google implemented the code red strategy. So we can see here that immediately the CEO was already all over this, you know, by December. And they even started to call on the, the founders of Google to come back to ultimately support them in this this war against ChatGPT. And so here's a quick timeline of what happened. So ChatGPT launched in November 30th, 2022. As you see in the video that I'm talking about, that I'm referencing in this video, I published around December 6th. So it was like, you know, very shortly after because I was so excited about this new development. And then in February, 2023, Google already launched, at least in beta, BARD. And so now at this point, BARD has been consolidated into Gemini. But when this first came out, BARD was the response, at least a semi-decent response to what ChatGPT was doing. Then in May, on May 10, 2023, they launched SGE, so Search Generative Experience. Now this was replaced now by AI overviews, as you'll see here in a second. Then in December 6, 2023, they officially launched Gemini, so a separate application that basically was an exact competitor to ChatGPT. So, you know, two AI chat platforms, and Gemini is separate from Google Search. It's its own dedicated product. So just in less than a year, basically, or about a year, give or take, Google officially launched three, you know, three solutions to combat what ChatGPT had done. So they're already moving very, very fast. But then they officially launched AI overviews on May 14th, 2024. And of course, the latest development is Google's AI mode, which is a, a separate tab inside of search, which more than likely all of search will just be AI mode, I would imagine, you know, with the exception of local pack and things like that. But it, we know the direction that we're going here and the direction is pure AI. And so chat GBT for better or for worse, you know, maybe caught Google on their heels, whatever it was, but Google did not just, you know, roll over and let chat GBT take over. And in fact, I would argue that Google has, it, it's quite impressive what they've been able to do since chat GBT launched. It's almost like it kind of lit a fire under Google and now they're really starting to ship a lot of really great search products. Uh, and these are all products that we need to be paying attention to. And now moving on to prediction number two. Open AI is very, very different. It's dialogue based. And I'm gonna show you a few other examples where it takes us even further where basically make renders Google useless in many ways. Okay, so here's another example I used from the 2022 video where I asked ChatGPT to create HTML and CSS for a dancing Santa Claus. So just to give some context on this, uh, when I was in high school, I was in a computer science class and we basically spent the entire year just trying to code a dancing Santa Claus. So that was like our big project for the year. And so when I ran this in 2022, I wanted to see like, you know, how, how far we have progressed. And you can see ChatGPT even back then was able to produce the code specifically for this particular project. But if I ran that same query in Google, obviously nothing would happen in traditional SERPs. Now, of course, these are not apples to apples comparisons, but just to show you how far Google has advanced since this time, take a look at this. So in 2022, Google could do nothing with this query. But now, even the AI overview still in the traditional like SERPs on Google can actually give you the code for this particular, you know, this particular project. You go into AI mode, once again, it can, it can produce that code for you. And of course, Gemini, which is, has really great coding capabilities, can do that very easily. So we see the difference just in, you know, three years or so, how much better Google has gotten at being able to handle queries like this. But of course, we can't ignore all of the new technology as well. So Google inside of Gemini, you can actually just create a video just asking, you know, create a dancing Santa Claus and it'll actually generate an AI generated video for you. But that's not all. You can also go into tools like Replit or Lovable and just one shot prompt 
create a lot of these things with basically no effort. This, what you're looking at here is obviously very elementary and not very, you know, sophisticated here, but this was literally just a one prompt like sentence. I just said, create a dancing Santa Claus, boom, threw it into Replit. And this is what it came up with without any additional prompting, no guidance, nothing, just straight one shot prompt. So then obviously the question that we're back to here is, is chat GBT going to kill Google? But there are now two games that we have to understand in this new environment. Number one is search everywhere optimization. So I figured it'd be kind of fun to demonstrate this more from like a visual perspective so you can understand where your time and effort needs to go, okay? So I'm using the planets and the sun to demonstrate this, okay? So these are all the platforms where you, you know, you should at least be thinking about. So number one, you know, we're gonna go from uh, the, the planet that's furthest away from the sun and we're gonna work in towards the sun, okay? So, um, and by the way, these are not perfect scale, okay? I'm, I'm somewhat within range here, okay? So number one, we have uh, Neptune, okay? So Neptune, of course, would be TikTok in this case. So TikTok is huge and should not be ignored. It's, it's a very, very huge platform with a lot of search behavior, especially with Gen Z and younger it's going to be the place where they're finding products and and services and solutions to their problems. So you you do need to start con, you know thinking how to build a presence there. The next one is Meta AI, okay? And Meta AI is absolutely ignored. A lot of people don't talk about Meta just because it, it doesn't get all the news headlines. But, but the truth is, they're integrating AI into Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp. All of their products are going to have the Meta AI built into it. So it's something we absolutely need to be paying attention to. Then of course we have uh, Microsoft Copilot and Microsoft obviously is integrated into everything. So we need to know ultimately, you know, how to influence Copilot to recommend our products and services. Now, the thing with Copilot is, is pretty much, I don't want to say it's a wrapper for open AI, but to a certain extent it is, they do have their own proprietary technology, but in general, it's largely driven by open AI. So if you're doing well with open AI in the static corpus and in chat GPT, you'll probably do pretty well in Copilot as well, okay? Then the sec, you know, the, the other platform that's absolutely massive other than Google, of course, is ChatGPT, okay? And ChatGPT is, is definitely the second most important in this scenario. That's why it's Jupiter, okay? Because Jupiter is the, the biggest planet, all right? But now as we go down here, now we're looking at some smaller platforms, okay? So we have Grok here, ironically on Mars. So that actually, um, <laughs> it's just kind of how it ended up. It was, then I realized later that it's kind of funny this ended up there because Elon Musk's uh, ambitions to go to Mars. But Grok is here, okay? Grok does matter and is a platform that we should be thinking about because it's unique in one quality that it does for its retrieval, it uses X. So it's gonna use X for some of that retrieval, which is interesting because no other platform is really gonna do that. Uh, the next one here is Claude, and Claude is huge, which is a, a product from Anthropic, which is one of the biggest AI companies. It's entirely possible that Anthropic's gonna start to chip away you know, in, in various departments within the AI industry. So you have to absolutely be paying attention to Claude. In fact, I use Claude every single day more indirectly because I use Replit. So Replit integrates with uh, with Claude. So I'm using Claude basically every single day. Uh, and then the next one here is Perplexity. Perplexity is also really important, one you absolutely have to pay attention to. It's not as massive as ChatGPT, uh, but it's still, it's growing and it's definitely a platform that a lot of people are using, okay? And then the final one, tiny little one here, which is Brave, okay? And the reason why Brave is important is because we already know that Google is gonna you know, feed its own products through Google search. We know that ChatGPT uses Bing. We know that Perplexity likely uses Bing as well. But the one that's really unique is Claude. And there's some evidence that Claude uses the Brave search engine. So we wanna be, and just for retrieval reasons, which I'll be talking about here in a second, we wanna make sure that we're, we're driving visibility across all the major search engines, traditional search engines. So Google, Bing, and Brave, okay? Those are gonna be the big ones because they are unique feeders to different products. So you definitely wanna be paying attention to that. But now let's talk about the elephant, okay? And so this is somewhat of a realistic picture of how big the sun is compared to the planets, um, <laughs> but not true scale here. But this is, to, in my opinion, how big Google actually is compared to everyone else, okay? Because when you combine all of the products together, you start to see the true scope of what search everywhere optimization looks like. And unfortunately, because so many people get so excited, and I don't blame them, I'm excited too about this, 
but they get excited about new platforms just because of the novelty of those platforms, but not because of the reality and the size of those platforms. So for example, like if you're obsessed with Grok, that's cool, but realistically Grok is just so, 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 so small compared to Google. And when I'm talking about Google, I'm talking about the, the full ecosystem. So within Google, we have traditional search results, which already gets way more searches than any other platform. Then we also have within the traditional search results, we have the local pack. That's its own dedicated product as well that, that has unique ranking variables outside of traditional search. So you have unique ranking variables in traditional search. You have unique ranking variables for the local pack. And then of course, still within traditional search results, we have the AI overviews, which once again, unique variables. And then you switch over to the AI mode on uh, when you're in the Google experience. Now you've got a, a, a whole chat experience there as well. Then you combine Gemini, which is a completely separate product altogether. It's a completely separate chat interface. Now that's a whole different thing. And then finally, the, you know, the second most popular website on the internet is YouTube. So when you think about the size of Google as a company, it's just so enormous that it, it, it is almost borderline foolish to start spending so many of your resources on these other platforms. It doesn't mean these platforms should be ignored, but it's more thinking about, you know, Google should be 90% of your effort across these products, okay? 90% of your effort should go towards these various products in Google, depending on what industry you're in. But Google's the, the giant, okay? And that doesn't seem to have changed very much. We thought there would be some chipping away because of these other platforms, but it doesn't seem to be the case. So, and so I, I don't get rom romantic about this. If, if for whatever reason, let's say chat GPT all of a sudden just swells up and it's bigger than Google all of a sudden, then cool. I'm going to go to chat GPT. I don't care where it is. I just want to go where the demand is, but I just want to illustrate this for you. So you can see, like, don't get so wrapped up on the novelty of new platforms. You need to ground yourself on reality because Google is where all the demand still is across these products. So nine, you know, 80 to 90% of your effort should be here and then, you know, allocate the rest of it towards these other platforms. And the second game that we're now playing is answer engine optimization or AEO for short. There's lots of acronyms out there. Honestly, I really don't care, but to me, this one just by definition makes the most sense. Because with search engine optimization, we were optimizing for the blue links, we're optimizing for traditional SERPs. But now uh, the new game is optimizing the answers, right? We want to try to influence the answers that are generated by the AI, okay? So that's why generative AI also, like generative uh, engine optimization also somewhat makes sense, but it's just way too confusing for most people. I think answer engine optimization is probably the cleanest uh, most broadly applicable queer uh, acronym that we can use. And it also makes sense as well, okay? So just real quick, you wanna run through this because it's very, very important to understand the distinctions here. So when we're talking about answer engine optimization, we're talking about optimizing these answers that are the output from the AI, okay? So a query goes through and there's an output. And there's only two mechanisms you need to understand. Number one is static corpus, okay? So what you're seeing here, is a response that is driven by the static corpus, which means ChatGPT's training data. And that training data has a cutoff, and when that cutoff hits, it cannot give you any information past that cutoff. So I believe for GPT-5, it's November 2024, or something like that. Some Towards the end of 2024, that's the cutoff. So if you ask anything about you know, current events or anything in 2025, it's not gonna be able to do it. But before I talk about that real quickly, when it comes to this static training data, uh, it's just using a lot of available resources that anyone else can have access to. So Common Crawl, it's going to use Common Crawl to train its AI, okay? And there's all kinds of other sources. I won't get into this, spend a whole video on this, but there's a lot of things that go into that. And can you influence it? Yes, you can, because Common Crawl is uh, crawling the internet as a whole. So if you have a much broader presence on the internet for your brand, naturally you're going to get baked into the training data. So the answer is yes, you can influence it, but it's not as uh, quantifiable and measurable. And so that's why in the, in the new version of ChatGPT, it's been the last couple of years here, is in the retrieval sector. And this is where SEOs can really have the advantage, okay? Because 
what happens now is instead of ChatGPT just saying can't answer it, it's going to go and use retrieval. And so what we're seeing here uh, in the in the thinking model is the reasoning process that the AI is going through to ultimately answer this query. And then on the right hand side, you can see here the sources that it used. Okay, now it doesn't. It, in this case, it did 106 sources. Okay, went through 106 sources. It doesn't use every source, but it will show you every source that it at least uh, you know, retrieved or fetched to get that information. Okay. So this is very important because I'll show you here why this matters. All right. So this is the context of how retrieval works. Now there's a big misconception that retrieval just means search and that's not true. RAG, which is retrieval augmented generation, um, is not just a search related type of thing. It doesn't mean just going to search. It's actually just a general concept for retrieving information in some sort of database or some sort of, uh, you know, existing source that exists. So for an advanced chat GPT user, funny enough, you know, like SERP APIs and direct fetch are actually would be really small and web search. So like we're looking over here, these, you know, we're looking at maybe, 15 to 20%. And so you might be wondering why that is. Well, because for an advanced chat GBT user, there's going to be a lot more user provided data. So like if you create a project in chat GBT, you can upload your own files, your, your own documents and chat GBT will always go to your existing docs before it goes out and searches. So search is like not the top priority when it uses retrieval. So there's a bunch of other sources of retrieval that it can use other than just going to web search. But once again, this is for like 1% of users. These are really advanced users. Not very likely that most people are operating this way, much more likely that you know, the average chat GPT user is some, you know, this is probably what's going to happen when they conduct a query in chat GPT. So more than likely when retrieval is used, it's going to be predominantly search, which means going to, you know, Bing, there's some evidence maybe that they use Google. Um, but you know, chat GPT hasn't revealed kind of what their blend is as far as how they do search. But in general, we know that search engines are used. Okay. There's also API partners, uh, APIs and partners. So APIs, they have a direct API to Reddit. They've got a bunch of other direct APIs. That means they'll go directly to those websites for retrieval. And then they've also got some, uh, partners, some news partners and media outlets. Uh, and then the other piece of this is direct fetch. If you told ChatGPT, go to rankability.com, it's going to go and, and fetch rankability.com. Okay. In your, in your prompt. So, but the main point here is that search is critical. And what we've been finding over the last many months is that ChatGPT does use retrieval, uh, quite a bit. In fact, probably more than ever, which means that search is more important than ever to be able to influence the answers. Okay. That is the goal of AEO. The goal is to, give as much uh, raw material so that we can influence that answer, specifically the uh, the answers for commercial queries. So the answers that actually matter, not informational queries. We really want to try to influence those commercial queries. So our brand becomes a recommendation from the AI. So just to wrap it up, these are the three search engines that you need to be paying attention to. And I would I know this sounds old school, but I would do some individual keyword tracking across these three platforms, these three search engines, only for the reason because we know that it's going to be used for retrieval, not because they're actually going to drive traffic from traditional SERPs. I would view traditional SERPs as basically kind of like, you know, eventually the yellow pages. Okay. That's essentially what's going to be. And it's going to be that layer that's going to continue to exist. I do not believe traditional SERPs are going to go anywhere. I think the index will remain, but I think the index is basically only going to be used for the AI platforms to ultimately, you know, for retrieval and various other things to enhance that experience inside the AI. But I don't think most users will be using traditional SERPs or the traditional, you know, links, blue links type of index that we've used for so many years. I think that will be phased out. And I do think that AI generated answers along with agentic capabilities are going to be merged together. And that's probably going to be the future.